Hey guys, what's up? Bye, Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today we're going a little more practical, um, taking on some more typical bases. The title of this video might be a little bit harsh, but it's meant to, to grab your guys' attention because these bases are different than the typical bases you see in league wars outside of the in-game league system, the anti-three-star bases. These are your more average bases, but it's worth talking about Town Hall 12, Town Hall 11, Town Hall 10. How do you want to be attacking right now in the game against typical everyday bases? Nothing um, from like CWO invite, just the basic stuff. Let's take a look um, at this, uh, this first attack here. This is on a Town Hall 12. And I know it's under level and you guys are thinking, why are you showing this attack? This is the only types of Town Hall 12s your 12s should be hitting. Unless you're a clan of like all 12s, in which case, yeah, everyone's attacking 12s. Um, you want to avoid the 12v12s. If you have a mix of like 10s, 11s, and 12s, which I say is most clans, or at least more than uh, the clans that have like all 12s, you want to have your 10s or your 11s hitting up to two-star the Town Hall 12s and then have your 12s dip down. You only have one attack. It's not worth it trying to fresh a maxed Town Hall 12, even if the base is a little suspicious in terms of the layout. But this is the type of base you do want to hit. It's definitely under level. We're seeing Town Hall, I mean, this is like Town Hall 9 defense levels, although it does have the uh, some important things like three decent level Inferno Towers, the Town Hall that's maxed out with the Giga Tesla. So it's not easy to three star for a 10 or an 11 even. Um, you need a 12, but 12 can definitely get the job done considering how under leveled it is. And the thing you guys will notice is there's a when the base is like this, it tends to be more compact and the advantage you have over one of these typical bases, this is true for any Town Hall level, um, is you're gonna get a lot of value from your spells and if applicable, a lot of value from your Grand Warden. The things that get the um, the mass effect, that spells, Warden, splash damage, bowler bounces, um, those are more powerful against these types of bases. So you can see here, um, there's going to be a ton of value from these balloons um, under these spells. The Warden's ability is going to get a bunch of value over the Town Hall here. Um, this one's a no-brainer for La Loon. Expos pointed down, good pathing, and just bites off a good piece with the kill squad. That's how you want to do it, guys. Nothing too fancy. Typically, just a kill squad, Lalo, a hybrid attack will work um, if you're kind of taking on one of these under-level Town Hall 12s that, um, that's a little too tough for an 11, but it's not tough enough that you want to try to two-star it. You feel like you can three-star it straight up. Well, there you go. This is a good strategy. We'll take a look at two 11s now as well. Um, and even a 10 to give you guys the, kind of the full breakdown of how you want to do it. All right, moving on to number eight here. This video was inspired, though, by um, by uh, my Patreon. Uh, we have a Discord server where people can ask questions and ask for uh, advice on attacking. And I see more bases like this than I do good anti-three-star bases. But they're, they're tricky. I've failed on them a bunch of times. I know people have trouble with them. Um, so it's worth talking about. This next attack, let me just pause for just a moment. Um, some things that you typically take for granted being in an anti-three-star base are not there. One of them, if you look, there's not a ton of value, but the witches with healers can go around untouched. There's no air defenses. There's no like splash damage, but not going to be any giant bombs even on the outside. Um, you can see that it's very, very easy, so might as well take what they're giving you. If the witches can wrap all the way around the base, um, go for it, which is why the witch bowler is very strong for taking on these um, typical Town Hall 11 bases. Town Hall 12 with the uh, Giga Tesla, you start to, it gets a little more tricky um, as you get to Town Hall 12, but Town Hall 11, when you can use that Warden's ability where you want at that perfect moment, as you're taking all the damage in the core, like right here, he's about to use it and get a ton of value from it. That is the value um, 
and that's why it's so powerful. So Nice Warden's ability has the jump spell because, of course, the Wall Wrecker won't make it to the back end. I'm not a huge fan of the jump spell, but uh, it definitely can work, and it does here, letting the troops move through. And like I said, um, the witches on each side is what's key. Now, the push isn't even going to like completely wreck the back end of the base here, but as long as you know you can send two witches, um, bowlers, whatever, around each side of the base with healers and do it successfully, there's very little chance of them dying. Um, that's a recipe for success because all you need your troops to do is clear out the core. Everything wraps around the back end. So that's part of the power of this attack is people aren't doing the typical stuff to prevent that like they typically are in anti-three-star bases you might see in more organized war leagues. All right, moving right along. Um, we have one more base to take a look at, or actually two more bases, one more Town Hall 11. This is, we have to go back a war to here, and it is number seven. These are all from One Hive Alpha. They're uh, grinding it out in the uh, in-game war leagues. All right, so this is similar, but this time we're incorporating a short queen walk into it. And that's another thing you guys will notice is they give up a lot of value in these bases because like I said, they're not designing them with these little things in mind. Um, a lot of value in these types of bases for a short queen walk. The queen charge, not so much. I'm not a huge fan of the queen charge because the core tends to be too tough to actually get the queen in and get value from the middle. So typically the value is from the outside, just get a short amount and it's pretty much a free trade, just four healers, five healers, the queen, and then you can have that feeding to a kill squad. She gets the funnel done on one side, uh, it's perfect how it works out here. And then um, witches on the top and the king, wall wrecker, a little bit of a complication with the CC kind of splitting on him, but it works out and look at all those bowlers going to the base. I mean, that is it, it is straight up like 20 bowlers just pounding it in. Um, but you can see it makes sense. I mean, there's two Inferno Towers, the Eagle, Expo's Wizard Tower. Everything's in the core. And look at that Warden's ability. Guys, I told you, that is the value. The, the bowler bounces, the Warden's ability, the spells, you're going to get insane value from it. That's why it seems easier to beat these bases. So don't do some kind of surgical attack with like three or four phases. It's just not going to be worth it because you're not taking advantage of what the base is giving you which is the power from those mass effect type items, the bowler, the spells, the warden's ability. Um, that's what you should be trying to maximize in these types of attacks. All right, so the bowlers kind of clear all that out, uses that last rage a little late maybe, and then there's some like giant bombs right here, almost as if the guy was expecting some bowlers to kind of be petering out right there, but still plenty of troops left up, the queen with her ability, um, and that's, that's gonna do it here. So uh, we will fast forward. And take a look at one Town Hall 10, which has become a bit of a sorry Town Hall level at, uh, at this point. Um, we're seeing lots of three stars, lots of kind of spam face roll attacks. Um, so we'll see. Maybe base building will adjust. But for now, I'm going to give you guys a prescription of what to use at Town Hall 10 for most of your attacks. Not all of them. Don't like force it too much because um, it, it can fail. But... This is the strategy, guys. It is, you can use baby dragons or big dragons. Not a huge difference, really. Um, they, they, do, they kind of serve the same function. But um, this, this is it, guys. You basically drop a hero on each side. It can be multi-infernos, it can be single infernos, because if it's, if it's uh, single, you can see the bat spell can really do some damage to those single infernos. If it's multi, the, uh, the dragons themselves aren't going to die very easily. Plus, they can still tank a few streams of the Infernos, so even the bat spells under some single Infernos can do damage. Um, you can also drop them away from this, the multi-Infernos. Uh, multi-Infernos, I meant. So there's, there's ways to get value no matter what type of Town Hall 10 base for the most part. I have, I'm yet to see, and I made a Town Hall 10 base building guide as soon as the update came out, actually. So check that out if you're interested. But I'm yet to see really a detailed description of how to defend this strategy. Um, very, very powerful. Two rages and then bat spells. And the heroes clear aside. I think the only thing with this attack is 
it's like a minor attack. You don't want to sue your heroes, then drop everything. You want everything going in at the same time so they can tank for each other, allow the heroes to get farther along. Um, but notice focusing the bat spells on the air defenses because that's what's dealing the big shots to uh, to the troops here. I would argue you also want to put one on the uh, single inferno on the back end, but the balloons uh, finish it off. And also these bats just stick around. I mean, they do not die easily, especially once there's not a wizard tower in the area. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. Um, this strategy has been crushing it lately. Just so many things coming from the air. It's hard for a base to defend. So... My point is, at Town Hall 10, especially in these types of wars where people aren't putting forward the best bases necessarily, don't overcomplicate it. Um, practice this strategy and then use it as much as you can, because right now, it's what's working. It has the most room for error. Just make sure you're able to get the um, Stone Slammer. It's the best siege machine to use. But you can also incorporate a Battle Blimp or a Wall Wrecker, depending on kind of what you're doing, to let one of your heroes into the base to kind of fly across and tank if you don't have access to the uh, stone slammer yet so that will do it thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys later bisectatron out